I want to first introduce Francois Barrault, who is uh, one of the leading uh, business consultants, runs his own firm, uh, and does a, a terrific job at that. Uh, Francois has been with us before and will lead us now in a discussion. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> I have two challenges this morning to wake you up or reward the early bird, uh, and also to talk about very complex things uh, in a simple manner so that you don't take your smartphone and do something else. So it's a, it's a real challenge. Um, despite my very young age, I've been in technology since uh, 1977. I had my first computer, and not only I've been a, a witness of the evolution, but I've been an actor uh, as well. So what I want to talk about is to look, of, of course, the main technology uh, revolutions, but what does it mean for us? How do you compare a machine uh, to a human? Uh, when you look at the evolution of the technology, you have two, two businesses. The first one is, is what we call B2B, business to business. And it's quite easy because everything has been designed by the man for the machine to serve the man. So it's quite easy because you know exactly what the machine will do. B2C is not as easy because you give technology to people and you never know what they will do with it. And that's how it's difficult uh, to manage. It's like a kid, you give them toys to play, you know, in the, in, uh, in the sand, and they might uh, find themselves with, uh, with the tools or do something else. When you look at the evolution of the technology, one of the first milestones has been the arrival of the PC. I'm not talking about, you know, all the goodies, but the PC given the person an access to a gigantic world, which was, is called now the cloud, but the computing. Then the smartphone came, and the smartphone was a kind of remote control with a cloud. And then came the very smart phone, which you had a GPS location, you had also access to anything else, and the power was so huge that you could do quite anything uh, with it. So that's where it starts and when it hurts. I always compare the evolution of the computing with the body and the brain. We have a big advantage against the machine. Look at this iPhone. I can see it. I can smell it. I can taste it. Not great, by the way. I can also um, uh, use it, talk to it, whatever. We have five cents. We have five cents to communicate. The machine has two cents. The machine can see with a camera. The machine can listen, hello Siri and whatever. By the way, switch off your uh, personal assistant at home because everything is, is, is stored. So at least we have five to two. Now, you're listening to me right now. What does it mean? Those loudspeakers transmit the sound at 300 meters per second to a membrane here that vibrates and transmit this information to your brain. You're looking at me. The speed of light is 300,000 kilometers by second. Then it arrives in the optical nerves here. And some of you knows me. Some of you do not know me. But the combination of my voice, of the fact that you see me, will go in the brain and create in the brain a kind of memory so that the afternoon, when, if you see me, maybe you re recognize my voice or see me. Now, I have a question. I remember you that a digital fiber, the data goes at 300,000 kilometers per second. When the information comes into my brain, Either you see me, either uh, you listen to me, or either you touch me. What is the speed of the, the data, because it's, it's a data, goes to your brain? Give me a ballpark. You will not be ridiculous. 
Okay, we have 300,000 here. Per second. Anybody more, less? Thierry. The speed of data in your brain. Ah, we have a we have a bidder here at 400,000. <laughs> Sorry? It's an auction. <laughs> no. So I give you uh, two datas. When I touch this phone, you know, I don't break it. I held it see if not too tight so it doesn't fall, okay? When I touch it, I have sensors. It goes into my brain at 60 meters per, per second. When it's my brain, it's 100 meters per second. So you know wh where I'm coming. We have a benchmark now between a machine that will capture the data immediately, that goes into the cloud immediately, and we have a human being where we are very slow. The advantage, we have five cents, but the machine has two, but the speed of data is, uh, is re really fast. So what does, that, what does it mean uh, for machine? I give you an example that you will all understand. We talked about that last year, is smart cars. When you have an autonomous car uh, on the road and there is a donkey on the road, the car will look at the donkey. It takes a three iteration to recognize a donkey, the machine 400. The machine will never have enough information to recognize its donkey because the edge computing today available is not big enough. So we will capture a thermic picture. It will go in the cloud with 5Gs. Then there will be a bunch of people, like in this room, there will be a lawyer, uh, there will be a, a, a cop, there will be anthropologists, there will be a, whatever you have, and they will decide whether or not the case has been already exists, or they, there will be a new case and say, oh, the donkey is cool, there is no car here, just cool down, and whatever uh, happens, when the, the donkey passes his way, you just accelerate. So when you look at this process, you capture the information with cameras. The best car now have 16 cameras. It goes into the cloud, 5G, next generation, at 300 kilometers per second. You have uh, as many as resources as you want, real time. They will decide, sign, give an order, and say, just break, okay? What does it mean for us? It's very easy. You see, it's a donkey. You have, you'd say, oh, the situation is easy, you just break. That's what we call the reflex. So what's going on now with the fact that the technology is booming, the new Moore's law are arriving. That means new speed of communication to go in the cloud, new sensors, new quantum computing, a new algorithm that will be able to gather all the knowledge on a subject real time and decide. There will be a competition with our reflex. The reflex is about 20 um, milliseconds. You know, at the 100 meters, when the, the gun starts, you, if the, the sprinter goes before under 10 milliseconds, it's below the reflex, so it's a forward depart. So we have a competition with a machine which deal end-to-end -end in a very fast and shorter and shorter and raw reflex. We can talk about augmented intelligence. I hate this. Uh, word artificial intelligence because it sounds fake, you know, fake news, fake everything. When the, the, the process of the data of the machine is faster than your reflex, then you can talk about intelligence. So there is a competition right now between our, the big advantage is we can correlate our sense and the machine. If I say hello to somebody in the morning, if he's tired or sick, I will see it, his voice is, is a bit cracking, I will listen to it. And then if when I shake the hand, it's wet or hot, the correlation of the strict signals captured by my sense, we say, oh, you're bloody sick. The machine doesn't have all those tools, but will go always faster and faster. So we're going to see 
in the next three years an incredible revolution that my friend has written in his uh, book, uh, uh, the Transhuman Code, Carlos uh, uh, Morera here, because of three technology revolution. First of all, the new Moore's law on computing. Everything will be by million faster and cheaper and smaller. The second, the 5G, where we, you will have access everywhere where you have the spectrum uh, on the real time. And then all those algorithms that will create real time, um, uh, real time uh, software. Then those revolution will mostly change not our lives because we are close to uh, uh, saturation, I would say, with uh, these kind of things, but on the B2B side. And there is a new uh, circle law where technology change the usage, usage change the business models, and business models change the investment in technology. Just one example, and then I will be done. Uh, we talk about this many times, but it's the best way to, to uh, uh, explain that. Knowledge during 20 centuries has been an asset to discriminate people. The people who knows are the people at the elite. Uh, we've seen this in Greece with the Romans, with the bourgeoisie, aristocracy. When Gutenberg wanted to socialize the knowledge, you know, he was in a bad shape. And one, one day, uh, internet came. Remember, many years ago, the boss was the one, is the one who knows. He say, oh, I have this information. I cannot tell you. So it make a difference. By the way, I have a big office with five windows. You don't. So there is lots of criteria. One day, internet came, and internet allows with the blogs, Wikipedia, to commoditize the knowledge. That means whatever you need to know, you just go on the net, type some semantic uh, software, and you have access to all of that. What does it mean? When you share something, the young generation, you share your pictures. Look, it's 8.49. Instead of being in my bed, I'm a stage talking to early birds, and, and thank you for that. So you share your experience. Um, you share also your trips. You share your good, your good uh, um, experience in life. That means. You, the usage change. That means tomorrow, it's okay to share your car. It's okay to share your apartment. It's, o it's okay to share your bike and whatever. So the sharing economy has started because people mentally have changed the way they deal with things. So technology changed the usage. But what does it mean for the business model? During hundreds of years, the car was a social achievement. The car was a tool where you wanted to sign your richness or your power, you want to impress your neighbors and whatever. One day, companies like BlaBlaCar, you share your cars. So what does it mean? The car is not an achievement. The car is, all of, is something you share. It's the same with um, apartments. You used to go to hotel, you share your apartments now. So what does it mean when you build cars? Are you building cars or are you transporting people? Are you hosting people or are you sharing your apartment? So technology change, uh, usage, business model, <coughs> and after uh, the investment in technology. It will also imply a new set of democracies because before we were controlling the people, now people can express themselves. I could talk during hours, but you will not be happy with me. Thank you. The good news is the best is ahead of us. The machine will never take control uh, of our life as long as we reasonable. And I count on you, and I can count on my kids and their friends. Thank you very much.